Assalamu alaikum. Welcome to my channel, Runaway Slave. I would like to give a big up to all my subs and supporters who like, comment, and share the videos. In addition, a special big up to all those who purchased my masterpiece, my book, The N Word Is No Secret in the Service. Big up to you all. Let's cook. Okay, people, this is another never forget moment in our history. The stuff that they don't like to teach the youth in schools. And this one right here is about the Leesburg Stockade Girls, is what they were called, okay? Now, the year is 1963 in a place called Americus, Georgia. Now, during this time in 1963, the youth often went out and protested during the Civil Rights era, okay? So the youth was very active. And it was normal for the parents and adults and the children to go out, protest racism, segregation. Uh, it, it was a time when, you know, black people just wanted to be treated like humans. So they took to the streets and they got active with their protests. So during this time, the youth was very active. Now, the date is in July of 1963, July of 1963. Now, about 200 African-American youth, they went to go demonstrate daily against the segregation at the Martin Theater and the Trailways bus station. So they would go here daily. And some of the youth went there one day and asked the attendant for some tickets. This attendant who was working there at the theater said no, called the police. Now, this day the youth are still out there protesting. And then what happened was the white community showed up as well to protest. What are they protesting? <laughs> I mean, come on, whatever. So the black youths are out there protesting. The white community shows up, and now this protest is no longer peaceful. They come with racial taunts and violence, of course, okay? So after that, the police show up. And this time, the police had a strategy. Of course, they're going to arrest the black youth. They're not going to arrest the white youth. That's just not, that's, that's not going to happen. So their strategy is, we're going to arrest these black protesters, and what they would do is to limit press coverage, right, and to break down ongoing protests, the police officers, they would arrest these youths or these protesters and try to send them to jails all across the region, like not a local jail. And that's what they did here, okay? So what they did was they arrested as many as 200 young black protesters this day. Some of these young black protesters were released and others were taken to other jails outside of the area so people couldn't see them. Now, this day there was a group of young women that were taken to an abandoned civil rights era prison and they were left there for almost two months, okay? And these young women who were taken to this abandoned civil rights era prison, they were all girls from age 12 to 14 and they, be they became eventually known as the Stolen Girls or the Leesburg Stockade Girls. Now, initially, these girls were taken to a jail in Dawson, Georgia. After they spent one night in this jail in Dawson, Georgia, they were taken to Leesburg and held in a room in this Lee County stockade. That's where they went. Nobody knew where these girls were. Their parents didn't know where they were at. Their family didn't know where they were at. And that's what it was. So imagine that. The youngest was 12 and the oldest was 14. Nobody knows where these young black girls are at. They're just going and missing. Okay? So this place that they were in, this Lee County stockade, it was a small, dirty, mildewed, molded, Civil War era prison. Now this place is about 20 miles from where they are from, okay? So they just went and put these girls in this dirty, nasty room, okay, full of microbes and whatever else, and they were not fed for the first two days that they were in prison there. Didn't feed them. Afterwards, these girls survived their following days on rations of undercooked hamburgers and egg sandwiches and things like that that was provided by the jailers who people, let's keep it real, when they gave the girls the food, you know they probably spitting it and all that before they gave it to them. That's what white supremacists do when they hand us our food, which is one reason why. I know in this situation, of course, the girls had to be there to survive. But that's one thing I would never understand about certain protests that I've seen during the civil rights era or even now when you see black people get mad, they bark about something, and I'm like, well, what you think they're doing with your food when they bring it? So you want a root beer and a hamburger that bad, you're going to sit there, let them drop a milkshake on your head, 
And then when they got to give you the food, I mean, they spitting on it, they dropping it in the toilet, they, they're doing everything else to it. So while these girls were at this place, they were trying to survive. I'm not talking about them. They had to eat what they had to eat. They slept on dirty mattresses. They slept on a cement floor. They had no running water, no working toilet, okay? This uh, stockade was full of mosquitoes, gnats, and all kind of stuff. One time the girls were inside, of course, and a guard even threw a snake in there to scare them. Now, these girls got through this terrible encounter, they say, by singing and praying. Now, there was a, a, a photographer. His name is Danny Lyon. He was the first one to locate these girls uh, weeks after he had been searching for them throughout the region. And when he located them, he did alert community members. He snuck and took pictures of the girls while they were in jail. And his pic pictures were published in the Student Voice, the Jet Magazine, the Chicago Defender, and other African-American newspapers throughout the country at the time. Uh, so he went and took these famous pictures, and these photographs documented the brutality of Jim Crow in rural Georgia for the entire nation to, peep, uh, for the entire nation to see people. Uh, now, these pictures, they were sent to Washington, D.C., and the political pressure led to these girls being released. Now, in these pictures... I know you see the girls are smiling. I have no idea why they are smiling. Maybe they, by then they were losing their minds. They were delusional. Maybe they seen somebody who came, and they were just happy that another human was out there. And possibly they're like, okay, we're going to get out of here. I have no reason why they looked like they were smiling. But trust me, they weren't happy. Now, these girls were finally released in mid-September. They were in this place for almost two months doing hard time. Hard time. Imagine that. Now, the outcome. The outcome. When they got to the bottom of it, these girls were not charged with a crime, okay, because they didn't do anything. But their parents each received a bill of $2 for every day that their daughters were locked up in this stockade. Seriously, people, I can't make this up. I can't make this is the type of stuff. This is how sick these people are. Again, failure to, to take uh, accountability and responsibility for what they did, what they do, you know, the illegal things. I mean, they received the bill for throwing them in this nasty place, okay? After this, this situation, I don't think any of the girls passed away in there. Luckily, uh, years later after this happened, the white community decided that they're going to do the typical moment of healing thing to unveil a plaque. You know, the, the nonsense that they do to black people who they have no respect for. You know, what a slap in the face. Uh, that's what they do. Somebody gets up and talk about healing. Oh, a conversation needs to be had. They have these dumb events where they cut ribbons and unveil a plaque, you know, Black people and their descendants who suffered are there. They clap with local white politicians. These are the same, you know, local politicians, so-called uh, activists or liberal white activists, whoever, who never do anything to compensate these families. I don't even think that their parents got the $2, you know, a day back or whatever. Who knows what kind of hardship that even caused. They had to pay $2 a day. That was a lot of money back then. Uh, I really hate these events. I really hate to see our people show up to these conversation-type ribbon plaque unveiling events. You know, I hate when the descendants of the people go there because all the black people do is walk away with nothing but pictures, you know, sweating hot, you know, swatting at flies and things like that. They hop in the car with no money and go stop at Golden Corral on the way home with nothing. That's it. Then this is all in the newspapers, and it looks like white people look heroic. It act heroic. It actually lionizes the habits of white people. Like, look what we did. We're becoming better people. Look, they even showed up. They forgave us. I mean, it's absolutely sickening. I wish that our people would never show up to these events unless it was already predetermined that a big check is going to be handed over, and that's it. You know, anytime they have these things, it's, it's really a slap in the face, very disrespectful, because it does nothing. You know, it does absolutely nothing but make the white people now look like good people. And they are the grandchildren of the people who actually did these things back in the day. You know, a bunch of white supremacists, man. Um, we're the only people who are not compensated for these type of situations on a planet Earth. Uh, I think it's really sad. It's really sad. But there you go, people. 1963, the stolen girls of the Leesburg Stockade. Wild story. Okay, wild story. And again, if anybody knows somebody who are one of these girls who was in there. I mean, they're still alive, quite a bit of them. Uh, I want to know the situation with why they were smiling or whatever, what happened if they were just happy to see somebody. I have no idea. Maybe you do. Get down in the comments. Let me know what was up. You know, I think that maybe they were being optimistic and praying and just trying to 
they seen somebody and they just were just hopeful that somebody popped up that wasn't one of them pig guards who were keeping them there and throwing snakes at them and doing stuff to their food or whatever. But uh, people get in the comments. Let me know what you know about this situation right here. Easy.